Bishop State presents fifth quarter. Here's Simone Eli and Gerhard Mathangani. Week three of high school football is here. Several teams across the area jumping on into region play. Tonight, three top ten matchups that will determine who takes the early charge in week three of the season. Welcome into fifth quarter. I'm Simone Eli alongside Gerhard Mathangani. And Gerhard, we're only three weeks into the year right now, but we are already seeing things take form when it comes to region play. No doubt about it. When you have such tight and competitive regions, which we've seen throughout the classifications, it's important to get off to an early start. You never know which games will bite you in November. No doubt about it. A blockbuster matchup for our game of the week in 7A region one, two top 10 teams. Gerhard. That's exactly right. Foley and MGM. Last year, these two teams played. It was a one-point game, 43-42 in overtime. MGM looking for revenge and looking good early on. Vikings on the move first. It's Troy Flowers on the carry. Big first down yards. First down there, 21 yards of the carry. Three plays later, Jared Hollins hits tight end Caden Harrell. Harrell does the rest. 35 yards into the end zone. MGM strikes first, 7-0 early on. But Derek Scott and the Foley Lions looking to drum up something. They I've had a lot of success on the ground this year, Simone, but not today. Colton Nero fumbles there. Johnny on the spot. Shondell Harris on the recovery. And the Vikings have the football. They take advantage immediately. Hollis up top once again. A beautiful ball to wow. James Bolden for the 31-yard touchdown. And MGM will go on to win and get revenge. Final score, 28 to 7. Huge win for the Vikings. And Kane Womack is going to be excited to have Hollins there at South Alabama. Okay. Top 10 matchup in 5A now. Third-ranked Faith Academy playing host to eighth-ranked Gulf Shores tonight. Tons of talent on the field on both sides. Here we go. First half action. Judson Harris. Quick pass over to Isaiah Hammock. Makes a man miss. He's in for the score. Dolphins take a 14 nothing lead. Rams Hall of Fame head coach Jack French looking for some offense. Mark Hudspeth trying to keep pedal to the metal. Check out this. Might be the play of the night, Gerhard. Jarrett Daughtry connects with his biggest weapon, Ty Goodwill. The Louisiana Raging Cajun screen gets up the sideline, stays in bounds, nearly loses his head. He's still upright and comes into the end zone after making a man miss. He's in for the score. The Rams on the board. They cut the deficit 24 to 7, but Dolph Shore is too strong tonight on the road. 31-16 Dolph. What a game there. Meanwhile, over to our next matchup, another top 10 battle between Spanish or St. Paul's and Sarah Land. There is talent all over the field here, Simone. You see it on the very first drive for Sarah Land. That is Deshaun Spencer to the house and the Spartans strike first early on. Later, still in the first, Ryan Williams, Mr. Football, takes a snap over to KJ Lacey, the Texas commit, up top in the air to Dylan Alfred, and Alfred comes down with the football inside the red zone. Wow. Talent everywhere, great drawn up play by Coach Kelly and his bunch. New plays later, Lacey to Williams. Pretty sure you'll hear this a whole lot this year on the touchdown catch there, early 13-0 lead for Sarah Land. Second quarter, it is Spencer once again, this time takes it the distance, shows off the wheels, Play the fight song. It is touchdown for Sarah Land, and Sarah Land will go on to win it big today. Final score in this one, 47 to three. All right, let's head over to West Mobile now. Baker playing host to Davidson tonight in a critical 7-8 region one matchup. Mississippi State commit Josh Flowers looking to go deep here, and he does. Katori Marion on the receiving end into the end zone. He goes in the second half, 31-7. The Hornets on top. Cheerleaders loving it. Gerhard Davidson now Hudson Hudson Spivey wants all of it. And check this out. It's Anthony Rab comes down with the great touchdown catch. Coach Norman saying, wow, that was pretty impressive. All right, Baker still threatening now, and they go to the ground. Roderick Taylor finds the hole, busts his way in for the Baker touchdown. And wow, a lot of points on the board tonight, but the Hornets gonna get it done. 66-28, the final over the Davidson Warriors. Impressive game there by Baker. Next up, Alma Bryant at Daphne. Daphne looking strong early on, and we know that the running game would be really solid behind this guy, senior Nick Clark, here on the carry. Breaks a few tackles and sets up the Trojans in great field position. They would get this field goal here by John Davis to go up 3-0 early on. Then new quarterback Jamar Monroe for Daphne gets on the scoreboard for the Trojans. This one was a tight one, though, Simone. Daphne took a huge lead, but Alma Bright ends up coming back at last check. This game is still going on 49-35. That is the score. Let's follow a battle in Baldwin County. All right, staying in Baldwin County, Spanish Fort taking a trip to Baldwin County. And this was a big defensive battle. Cole, Cole McConthy here going to fly into the backfield for the sack. 
With about five minutes left in the first quarter, Toro's going to look for a little bit of offense later on. And uh, here they are on defense again, making some plays, forcing the turnover. Drew Williamson headed the other direction. And then it's the quarterback, Aiden Schamberg, who are going to take it in himself. 6 nothing Spanish Fort. And look at this final score, just 14-13 Spanish Fort wins it. What a battle between the Toros and the Tigers. Nice action there. Let's go over this time. Blunt taking on Citronella, a really, uh, Robertsdale, I can say, a really strong matchup here. It is Jerome Williams who would get Blunt, Blunt on the football first. Running back takes the carry into the end zone. A touchdown with about a minute and a half to go in the first quarter. It would nail the extra point behind J.D. Nathan's kick. And then in the second quarter, Robertsdale turning on the juice. It's Devin McCovery on the carry. A nice game here. A low scoring affair in the first half. And the final in this one, Blunt takes it, 28 to 7. All right, let's out go out to Theodore now in 6A, 8th ranked Bobcats hosting Murphy tonight. And Miami Kent Cameron Pruitt, check them out here, making plays early on on defense. Sacks the Panthers deep in their own territory. Bobcats with the momentum. Still in the first half, Cameron Rigby, the senior quarterback, hooks up with Braxton Clark. He dances his way into pay dirt, and Theodore leads it early at home. Later, this is not a replay, but seems like the same play. Rigby to Clark again. In to the end zone he goes, and Theodore extends their lead at that point. The Bobcats touchdown makes it 29 to nothing, and Theodore's going to get the big win over Murphy, 39-7 final. Next up, let's go over to a big matchup between Citronelle and Viger. Third quarter, Citronelle smelling the upset. They already lead at 14-7. This is Justin Adams scrambles and goes deep into Wolves territory. Very next play, Adams hits Rivers Johnson in the end zone for the touchdown, just like that. Citronelle takes a 21 to seven lead. A little bit later on, Vigers Carlos Benjamin had a great game last week, Simone. Pair of touchdowns in the first half in the Wolves opener, but fumbles the football here. Citronelle scoops it up, back in business there offensively, and they take prime advantage of the turnover. This time, Adams rolling out. Taking a little bit of time, just enough for James Reed to get open in the end zone for the touchdown, 28 to seven, your score there. And Citronelle and, and Viger right now tied late in this one. We talked about great games, mm -hmm. another great one here, largely early for Citronelle, but we'll tie up. Yeah, the uh, Wildcats certainly a different team this year right with the new head coach. We'll see how that one ends up. We'll see if we can get a final score before the show ends. Gerhard, we are not done yet, a lot more to come. No doubt about it. We also have our Plays of the Week nominees. We also have a lot more scores and a lot more highlights next year on the Fifth Quarter.